Jumping into the top receiver plays here in week one, let's go in and get into it. Now, in case you guys missed it, I have already done the running back and quarterback video. So make sure to watch those two if you haven't. This is kind of the line of construction that I have going with that by covering that. Let's go and talk about the top receivers that we want to be on. So right out the bat, I do think Justin Jefferson is going to be kind of a standout player. He's very easy to fit into your builds this week in week one because there's so much value, right? It's week one. We typically see that. Um, the question is, do you want to pay up for two stud running backs in Austin Eckler and maybe Josh Jacobs, but uh, Christian McCaffrey? Or do you want to pay up with Justin Jefferson and maybe one of those other running backs? That that's really up for you guys and how you view your roster construction. I would say probably all the correct decisions there. Uh, maybe Josh Jacobs a little bit more, uh, just given the price tag being cheaper, but uh, Justin Jefferson makes a ton of sense. Like the upside is there for him to easily go off 430 DraftKings points and it wouldn't shock anyone, right? We saw that consistently happen last season. And I think we'll see that consistently happen again this season. That's not really a hot take or anything like that. Like you guys already know that. So let's go and move on into the next listed receivers. So we got Cooper Cup currently banged up. I think he's just going to be easy to stay away. Now that could easily mean that his price is much lower than it should be. Uh, obviously with Matthew Stafford there, that's going to help him out a little bit more. The offense is going to be a little bit better, you'd assume. Uh, but I think it's kind of just the easy to stay away. And the one game that I've been wanting to target the most is actually this Miami versus Los Angeles Chargers game because I think it's going to be very high scoring and so if we are maybe trying to stack that in some capacity because it's going to be to me the best game Tyree kill is going to be the easiest option he looks super good this preseason like he did last year and i think we're just going to be able to go back to the well with him pretty easily now at the tail end of the season people might see this and say well he really struggled at the end of the season last year and i mean not really but like his production did fall off a little bit those are tough matchups guys this matchup with los angeles shouldn't be tough we saw in week 14 he had 24.1 DraftKings points against them i kind of expect that similar production there for him especially with that running back room being banged up like they might be having mostert as their rb1 gain 20 carries which albeit might not be terrible and then they might just have undrafted rookie free agent Chris Brooks who was one of the most impressive rookie running backs this preseason that being said like they might just because of that depth and you know not having all the weapons that they would want available they might just design a few more plays to Tyree Kill so I am actually defaulting to Tyree Kill as my payup over Justin Jefferson hopefully that's not a mistake and then from there I, I like Keenan Allen as price tag apparently the offense has really been flowing through Keenan Allen like it always does when he's healthy Justin Herbert loves to target him some Keenan Allen as led to him being extremely consistent what I hate is that DraftKings is actually accounting for that this week he is priced at his highest price tag over the past Past year over the past 365 days that worries me once again it is because of the matchup and it's probably because the offense is flowing through him so maybe if you're trying to stack that game if you like justin herbert as your quarterback i think we're going keen Allen. now that being said we did get news that mike williams is going to be operating out of the slot a little bit more frequently uh than he was in previous season kellen moore wants to get him involved in the offense a little bit more so if that does occur and guys this is very much risk reward but if that does occur this price tag of 5.7 in this game that we want to be targeting is definitely just too low that's a price tag we need to be taking advantage of there as well and then another play that i do like chris olave i already mentioned that i think Derek carr is one of the most discounted price quarterback plays that we have on the slate you know obviously if that's true we want to be on chris olave who kind of the forgotten uh second year receiver it seems like with garrett wilson getting all that hype as rightfully so but chris olave man he looked good last year as well they get a good matchup going against tennessee as well like if you are playing Derek carr you want to be putting either christian Ola chris olave michael thomas and Jawan james is who you're playing anyways or Jawan johnson is who you're playing anyways chris olave does make a lot of sense as as a pay up play but that's my biggest issue with this slate guys is i don't think we need to pay up that much like we have christian watson here was who was extremely impressive last year and has been impressive in the preseason thus far now he had a bad drop against seattle as a deep bomb uh, a windy day as well so the ball kind of hung up there a little bit more christian watson had to come back to a little bit and i think he just kind of mistimed it with the wind but the fact of the matter there <laughs> fact of the matter there is that the play was there to be made okay if it's not windy, I do think that's just a 60 yard touchdown. Those big plays are going to be there for him, but I also think the consistency is going to be there for him a little bit more. Playing Jordan Love, you probably want to play Christian Watson, especially if Romeo Dobbs is out. They might just force feed Christian Watson the ball a little bit more. Like if we see 10 targets go Christian Watson's way, I wouldn't be too shocked. 
I guess I should say opportunities because he could get some end of rounds and whatnot as well. From there, I do want to mention Chris Godwin, like Baker Mayfield. I don't think he's been like great this preseason, but he's been, he's done good enough to get the ball to his pass catchers, especially like Chris Godwin or Mike Evans in this great matchup going against Minnesota. Now I like Chris Godwin. I think he's a little bit more consistent guys. I mean, look at last year, that game long, he had over 10 DraftKings points in every single game except for week one. And that's the game that he got injured. So every single game that he played a full allotment of snaps, he had over 10 DK points. Now that might not be something that interests you guys, but there is a lot of safety there. He makes a lot of sense in the cash build because I do think we are still going to get that safety, especially in this matchup against Minnesota. We could even see him get that 20 get his ceiling in that matchup and then from there I, I do need to note this now my biggest worry is that uh alexander shadows dj Moore potentially but i think they're going to be moving dj Moore around a lot in that offense so that that doesn't occur especially in week one and then i think that'll read to some better like qb reads some rpos for them so i don't know how much the packers are actually going to be able to shadow now they still have douglas on the opposite side and they have some really good young cornerbacks as well like i think the packers defense is going to be much better than people expect but DJ Moore has been getting a ton of hype out of camp, rightfully so, guys. He has been very impressive. He took two short yard catches almost to the house. And we know it's, I mean, DJ Moore has been a possession receiver, but he's been a possession receiver for two reasons. One, his quarterback suck. That hasn't changed yet. So that might still occur, like going to be a high floor play. But two, he's highly talented. Like he is just getting open as well. So I do think we are going to see that consistency still be there for him. We might like look back at this and be like, my, man, why didn't we go all in on DJ Moore at 6.1? Given the amount of hype that he's been getting in camp. Another you know, pretty safe play is going to be Deontay Johnson and Kenny Pickett is someone that has been very impressive thus far uh, this preseason. Look, look good. And so if he has improved, like we saw on film this preseason, Deontay Johnson at 5.3 is definitely a play that we need to be considering. And then you guys are probably saying George Pickens as well. I, I agree. I like Deontay Johnson at, you know, $300 more. It feels a little bit safer. I do think Nico Collins at this price tag is probably going to be one of the cheapest we see him. Uh, CJ Stroud has looked to him a bunch already this preseason. I do think he's going to be something we default to as a value play like if we are searching for value this week at the receiver position i think we are defaulting to nico collins now that being said adam thielen he was targeted heavily as well uh, with Bryce Young and with DJ Chark being banged up. So he might be someone that honestly just gets forced into a heavy target share in week one. He could be a source for uh, value as well at the receiver position. So Nico Collins, Adam Thielen, both two players at the receiver spot that we could be looking at to save some salary. Now, that being said, a lot of people were thinking that uh, Josh Palmer wouldn't be the receiver number three in this offense when they drafted Quinton Johnson. Now he's much more of a project, I would say, but he, he didn't look great. He didn't, he didn't look bad. You can see why he was a top draft pick in the NFL draft, but Josh Palmer's still there, guys. You know, he had 800 yards last season out of necessity, don't get me wrong, because Mike Williams, uh, you know, were kind of banged up here and there, but he's solid. He's a solid receiver. And so at 4K, it wouldn't be shocking to see him, you know, maybe have a blow-up game, maybe score 16 DraftKings points. Obviously, we'd need a touchdown in that, but that wouldn't be too shocking given the matchup, given that game that I want to be targeting. Now, I do worry that Elijah Moore is going to be chalk. And guys, I don't I don't know. I soured on Elijah Moore after week one last year. I was watching the film and he just did not look good. And then I went back and watched the film from his rookie year. I'm like, man, I think I just messed that up because I was kind of hyping him up. And I'm like, he's just not as good as I remember. And we saw it occur throughout the whole season last year. Now, he has been someone that Browns camp has just hyping up. All the fans, the beat reporters were hyping up Elijah Moore. And maybe, it's tough to say because he does get open. He was open a lot last year. Um, I don't know. He's just, he's not DJ Moore, I guess, is the best example. He's more Jarvis Landry when he was with Cleveland, which wasn't a bad thing, but I would say like the last year <laughs> that we had Jarvis Landry there. And I just struggle with this play because I think he'll be pretty high owned because of that hype, because of the price tag. And it's it's just one of those situations where I do think the targets are going to be there for him, like six targets, four catches, 40 yards, easy option to two X, kind of a safe shoulder shrug play. And if he's not as high owned as I think he's going to play, it just might be one of those maybe easy clicks. And I know the matchup isn't the best, but we might just be having to do that. Now, guys, I do want to continue on, but if you guys have made it this far, make sure to give a like and subscribe. That does help out my channel a lot. And I do appreciate that. That helps me be able to put out more content for you guys. Now we're going to get into some very deep dives at the receiver position. It's week one. I think we are getting some price discounts on some players that maybe just blow up. I always kind of the fall to uh, Tariq Cohen blowing up where in preseason week one, his rookie season, he 
really went off. He had been someone that was getting a lot of hype out of camp. And then they basically shut him down for the preseason. We have some players like that this year as well that I think can end up doing a lot better than we all expect. Okay, let's touch on those three receivers. So Puka Nakua, okay, literally fits that exact bill. They all do. The three uh, receivers I'm mentioning all fit that kind of bill. So in preseason week one, he did have this touchdown grab uh, against the Chargers. And really after that, game they just shut him down okay he's been someone that was getting a lot of hype out of camp and he's someone that seems to be their receiver number three now it might be Tutu Atwell or Ben Skoranek that could easily occur don't get me wrong but with Cooper Cup kind of banged up I think we can end up seeing Puka being the one that they roll with as their receiver number two especially on the outside I it just wouldn't be shocking to see him have a big week and obviously we're not going crazy with that but if you guys are you know down at the min price and trying to find someone he could be someone that you're looking at and what you guys will notice is that these were all preseason uh darling for me and you guys hopefully as well uh tank Dell. we all remember the preseason week one game where he went off dominated uh help us take down some showdowns and he just guys he lit it up tank Dell was super impressive and we could just see the speed the quickness and ability to break a route off and just go out and make a play i mean this guy has been super impressed super impressed and the biggest issue here would be the quarterback play cj stroud rookie that worries me but that's really it i mentioned nico collins as a play that i really like i think that's true but they don't really have anyone else. They have Robert Woods. I think uh, Tank Dell could actually end up being their ideal possession receiver. Now he did play. I shouldn't say he played. He was active for their preseason games, but didn't really play much. So it's not as telling as the Rams. Like the Rams are pretty much saying Puka is going to be involved. But I do think there is some value there. Then the last one that I want to call out here, and there's one more actually. Demario Douglas, guys. Another guy that has really just stood out in, in camp now he has been wearing a, a red non-contact jersey that worries but man guys if i was excited about tank dell as a receiver i'm going to be excited about demario douglas as a receiver as well we all kind of think it's going to be juju in that slot role but it might be douglas like there's apparently reports that juju has actually lost a step and he's just never going to be that receiver that he once was and maybe the reason why we haven't seen douglas too much one is because he's injured don't get me wrong but two might just be because they are saving him for week one. They want him to be good to go because they see him being a big passing asset. Now, reports are also saying Kendrick Bourne might be a little bit more involved than people thought, but they really don't have anyone. They need someone to step up and Douglas has been impressive. So it wouldn't be surprising if he has a really big game in week one. And the last one here, I, I said there's three, there's actually four. Malik Heath. Now he did kind of fall off in the final preseason game and this is very much going to be dependent on Romeo Dobbs being healthy. Uh, Romeo Dobbs is currently questionable. And I don't know, I... I do doubt that they turn to him as the receiver number two, but they might. And he was very impressive. Like he's their out, he would be an outside receiver. Obviously, they have Jaden Reed playing on the inside. Uh, Torre could be someone that would move to the outside as well. But given how good Heath looked, like if Dobbs is out, I don't really expect that to happen. I expect Dobbs to be active, but hey, maybe Malik Heath is someone that we want a little bit of, especially given the fact that that game is going to be a game that we want. And the biggest thing about kind of Heath or this offense is that there are just a lot of designed kind of plays and reads and if matt lafleur sees a matchup that he likes he might design a play to take advantage of that matchup so it might not matter who the receiver is but guys this is what i mean like i went through and did all my favorite receiver plays already and we still have a ton of salary left over like it's super easy to make upgrades to your lineup wherever you see fit uh let me know if i missed a receiver that you guys like uh, in the comment section below but also let us know why like this is a team effort you know my channel's on the smaller channel but it's on the bigger I guess, size of the smaller channels. So we don't really have to worry about changing ownership too much. I can just give you guys my favorite plays. Plus you guys can as well. Like we don't have to withhold any information. That's gonna be all for today's video though. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give a like and subscribe. Let's have a good slate. And as always guys, let's keep cashing.